launched at Echuca on the 21st of June 2023. It's a 50-year-old timber Hartley, 6 metres. We headed upstream 50 k's to Barma, passing the uh, Goulburn River Junction. is pretty flooded in places and you've got to keep watching out for floaters coming downstream it's still nice we stopped at the Barma pub for a palmy and a beer mm -hmm. and it made a welcome uh, break off the river the weather was pretty chilly but we had blue skies most of the time um, the odd shower coming about. 1,762 k's to go. Yippee! You can see the level of last year's flood up in the trees. Mm. It's still pretty flooded where we were now, but not as bad as last year. We turned around at Barma and went, started heading back towards Echuca to meet up with Peter and Tanya who were going to launch their boat. We helped, we helped uh, launch Pete's trailer sailor and then put our cars back in the storage yard with the trailers. We'll pick them up in a couple of months' time. It was first night's camp, halfway down to Tarumbri Weir, which we'd uh, get to the next day. Past the paddle steamer, Emmy Lou, heading upstream. The flow reached 32 gigalitres and they're preparing to pull the weir out at Tarumbri. Uh, it gets removed at 34 gigalitres, which they did a couple of days later. Inside the lock, it's Tarumbri, our first lock. And the water is flogging through over there. Mm. Hands in charge of navigating and spotting floaters and stumps. And I'm meant to miss them. Uh, the big flow makes it pretty exciting on some of the corners where the water's swirling. Um, but all in all, it was pretty good. It was beautiful going through the Perakuta and Kondruk forests. Um, however, they did put out a minor flood warning for the area, so we we're wary of how high the flow was. 160 to the mouth. Hurrah! With the big flow, we're doing about 13 kilometres an hour. We're aiming to do about 40 kilometres a day. And I'll try and pull up by lunchtime. You can camp anywhere on the Victorian side, but only in national parks and state forests on the New South Wales side of the river. We passed some guys with an electrofisher removing carp out of the river. We were heading towards Barham, where we're going to have the first of five bridges lifted. Um, we had to organise the local council um, to get them lifted. Normally you can fit under them, but with the higher flow, um, we uh, we couldn't fit. As I only lift them on weekdays, we had to wait over the weekend um, for them to lift it on Monday morning. The river had completely broken its banks below Barham and uh, it lifted lots of timber. Um, it was stuff floating everywhere it wasn't a particularly good spot we headed towards Murrabit for a 9 30 lift of the bridge the next morning um, the river's flowing pretty fast here and plenty of snags and floaters which we hit a couple of with no damage thank goodness we're heading towards swan hill where we could top up the fuel and uh, food and everyone could have hot showers so we're looking forward to that peter and tanya had to get a new fridge there when the old one died it was um, it's going to make a welcome um, stop along the way. The river was still chock a block through here, but um, we didn't hit any um, floaters or snags, so it was all good. We could pull up right in the middle of town, so that was so handy to the supermarket and the petrol station. Um, and we even got out for a restaurant meal, which was great. 
and the council lifted the bridge for us the next morning at half past nine. So we're on our way again. The water height at Swan Hill was 3.7 metres on the gauge. The river got considerably wider and calmer under past um, Swan Hill as we headed towards Nyer. We had it um, Nyer and Tulibuck um, booked for the next day. So we're going to have to be on a game through here, but it was a, um, it was a really nice run down the river. Bit of farmland about and some really big irrigation projects um, starting to appear as well. Some great afternoons sitting around the fire soaking up some sunshine. Very pleasant. Tanya just explaining to me the size of the fish that just got away. Next time. Under the bridge at Nyer, didn't present any problems. Under the last bridge at Tulibuck, which in hindsight I don't think we needed to have lifted. But um, anyway, they did it anyways. We headed towards Waipole Junction. <coughs> we had to go through the Bitchin Pups, which is a um, area of Problems in lower water, but we didn't have any dramas. There was um, plenty of water. The river was very bendy through this part. The current was faster and there was plenty of snags and floaters about. We even heated some water for a quick bath. Very welcome. In the Murray Valley Reserve for two nights, and we found four canoe trees just around the We met Doug and his mate riding the jet skis from Echuca to Bell Reynolds up the Murrumbidgee. Yeah, there's plenty of big irrigation projects through this part of the river. Pretty chilly overnight with um, steam coming off the river next morning. And taking charge of the wheel, I'm demoted to cabin boy again. And under the bridge at Robinvale, no lift required here. Plenty of height. Pete was fairly excited for a shower at um, Robinvale. And there was a good tie up right below the Euston uh, Club, which we um, had a nice meal at. Through the Weir at Euston. We had a 9.30 booking for the Weir at Euston. Hi! Said goodbye to some family that we met at Euston. Some great sunsets on the river. Um, every night was absolutely different. And this huge mussel shell we found. It was a dead one, but it was a whopper. We spent the night at Retail Cutting, which was a great camp. We saw lots of um, old paddle steamers along the way. Most of them were moored up, though, um, while the flow was high. We checked out what's reputed to be the biggest red gum in well, the world, um, but we reckon there was one bigger down further. This was still pretty impressive, but the floods made the sign a bit hard to find, though. After my first burnt damper, Tanya's got me up to spec on how to cook a good one. Just carp, carp, and more carp. Yeah, the golden hour certainly puts out some great reflections in the river. This was great here. 
Yeah, we're not sure how the early loggers missed this one, but we reckon this was a monster. The yeah, river's quite flooded through here. We've still got about 40 gigalitres coming down. Um, and the river's really wide. It's sort of flooded out through the forest on both sides. Past the site pumps at Redcliffe, not far out of Mildura. We camped at the Gold Gold Caravan Park for three nights while they were pulling the weir out at Mildura. There's a couple of photos here of the trestles getting pulled across the river. Um, takes them a couple of days to get that done and you can't use the lock wire that's happening. Uh, we finally got underway once the weir was out. Checked out some of the paddle steamers around Mildura under the main bridge at Mildura and the 24 hour tie up um, in town. And then past the lock which we couldn't use uh, we came through the main weir. And then down to the Abbotsford Bridge at Wentworth. Just headed into Wentworth um, and great tie up in the middle of town. This is the uh, Darling Murray Junction. Uh, Murray's on the right, Darling on the left and the wharf at Wentworth. We decided we'd head up to Darling and see how far up we could get. We ended up getting up about 52 k so under the bridge at Wentworth, uh, there's lots of snags. There was no flow, so it was a bit slower going than on the uh, Murray, and a fair bit shallower. Um, not sure how you go with a big houseboat up there. Um, it was fairly tight in places, but we got up 52 k's to Avoca Station, where Ian and Barb Law showed us around. Uh, and they were some lovely people. Had a cup of tea with there. And we turned around, uh, spent the night up there, and then turned around and headed back down to the Murray. So downstream from Wentworth through Lock 10, um, water was flowing pretty quick now. We're at 40 gigalitres um, coming through here. So um, it was a bit surgy on the corners. Um, but yeah, all in all pretty good. Not as many floaters um, as further up river. And we headed downstream to Fort Courage Caravan Park and had hot showers there, which was really great. We cooked a damper that night, which was better. I'm not burning them anymore. Thanks, Tanya. Had a nice clear day to travel down to Lock 9, past some prehistoric old homesteads. Lock 9 was in service, so um, we passed through that no problem. Managed to catch a feed of yabs that night, um, which was good with our damper. This is lock number eight and they're pulling the boards out today because of the high flow in the river. And lots of activity here. You can see all the guys working over here. Yep. And all the peach just coming in to the lock now. So we average about 40 kilometres a day and they're travelling at about 13 kilometres an hour. So we only travel for three or four hours a day and try and pull up camp. And Pete and Tanya are just getting underway in the morning now. The river here is quite flooded. This is around Lock 7. All the infrastructure about the lock was um, underwater. Um, 
the river's flowing, I don't know, maybe five or six kilometres an hour. But there's not too many floaters or snags to be found here. Um, which is a relief. This is coming around Devil's Elbow, which is one of the more scenic bends in the river. Some striking um, rock colours in the cliffs. station checked out the old shearing shed and the sand dunes um, we stayed overnight with Eric and Kerry and had some great um, wood-fired pizzas out on their deck overlooking the river great spot to um, spend the night on the way through highly recommended we found McCabe's corner the corner of Victoria New South Wales and South Australia and got out for the Flickery photos and headed down to the South Aussie border um, and then stopped for fuel at Customs House which was great you could get the um, fuel hoses right onto the um, boat they didn't have to cut any jerry cans here we headed down through lock six and hanging on to the ropes there to hold the boat steady and heading for the Woolshed Brewery tonight for an overnighter there, which should be a bit of fun. It's quite high up, those stairs can prove a little challenging. Arr, it's a motley crew. Down past the cliffs on the way to Renmark. Um, a really beautiful part of the river. Yeah, one of the more interesting houseboats we saw along the way. A bit of a local character, apparently. Through Lock 7 without any problems. Flow still around 40 gig. And lock six opening up. Going through, no, lock five, isn't it? Lock, lock five. Lock five opening up. Five hundred and thirty-six k's to go. Yippee! We stopped in a berry. It's got a really good tie-up right in the middle of town. Uh, we had to do a bit of shopping. Um, got a coffee and then we headed down to Book Penong Cliffs um, which is a really scenic camp um, so not too far downstream from Berry. had a fantastic sunset there and next morning um, started heading back downstream Big heap of swallows and pilt nests in the um, in the cliffs, then um, down onto Lock Four. I think it was. We did some shopping and got lunch at Loxton, and then headed downstream to Catapro Creek uh, for an overnight stop. Went through locks three and four on the way to Overland Corner. So we stopped for the night, went out and checked out the old pub. Um, pretty amazed at the flood levels back from 1956. Uh, the publican told us it got very close um, in 2022. Um, yeah, it must have been huge, but they built a big levee around the pub now, which um, saves it. Um, save the water coming in there this time that's the old um, brick pit behind the pub which uh, was pretty cool to check out and yeah, it was quite a nice camp for the night very foggy the next morning getting going we uh, turned around and uh, waited for a bit the cliffs past overland corner um, i think were probably the most impressive on the river um, 
with beautiful dice fighting um, heading down from uh, Overland Corner found an old wine barrel washed down in the year before the flood and put it in our newly acquired lounge room to watch the Matildas play France in the World Cup which was such a fun night cheering the girls on um, and then we headed down to Morgan some more great cliffs downstream from Morgan and the Murray Princess coming up river makes a few we headed down past the cliffs around Swan Reach and Blanchetown, um, heading towards Madam through our last um, block. Um, and there's a lot more traffic um, on the river down here. Overnight stay at Cornermont. We pulled up at the visiting Boats Wharf at Manham. Uh, did some shopping, went and had a pub meal, uh, and a look around the town, which is a great old town. We headed through Murray Bridge and stopped at Long Island Marina for the night. We waited at Wellington uh, for the weather to get good so we could cross Lake Alexandrina. Went to wait a couple of nights here because uh, she was a bit wild. But uh, when we finally got going, fairly early in the morning, grey clouds and some storms behind us, but the wind was low, so we just dash for it. the bridge at Goolwa um, we decided we'd head down to the Murray Mouth um, while we were going so had our welcoming committee of seals going through the lock at Goolwa and it's about a 10k run down to the Murray Mouth okay so we got to the Murray Mouth the bridge is not operating yeah, there's a whole bunch of seals over on the sand there we can't make them out. There's big waves out there, so we don't want to get there. Pete and Tanya doing a victory lap. Good on you guys. And back through the lock to Kuron Keys Marina. We stayed there for a couple of nights, and then uh, Pete and I headed back up to Pachuca to pick up our cars on the bus. The ladies from the Inland Rivers National Marathon Register presented our certificates at the finish of our journey, which was good fun.